Well, I thought I'd make a little video to show people how to grow echeverias from seed. Um, you can get lots of different beautiful hybrids like these ones here if you grow the seeds yourself. It's very hard to find seeds of these uh, for sale on the internet, so the best way is to just collect seeds off your own plants. So let me show you how I do that. Well, here's some plants that flowered earlier in the summer. It's now the middle of winter here, and there's these old seed heads here that are just kind of dry and brown. And we're going to break those off, and then I'll show you how to get the seeds out of them. Okay, so now we're inside, and we have the seed heads from the echeverias here, just sitting on a piece of white paper. Now, if you take these seed heads, um, they have the tiniest seeds, they're like dust. So you can see this, if I just shake one of these over the piece of white paper, you'll see all this dusty stuff coming out of it. And that is the, uh, those are the seeds. So another thing you can do then is just to take one of the seed heads and crush it a little bit between your fingers. And you'll see a lot more of the dusty little tiny things fall out. And those are the seeds. And then there's the bigger debris, just the broken seed head. And that stuff isn't really worth anything to you. And in fact, will cause rot to happen on your little flower pot. So the best thing to do is, having gotten it to this kind of stage, there's my sheet of paper now with the dust on it. I just take something like a pencil and very carefully just kind of run the pencil over the top of it and sort of sweep those bigger pieces away. And that leaves the very fine seeds at the bottom. If you get rid of those pieces of larger debris, and you just do this a few times, it's hard to do this with one hand, but just get rid of that bigger debris and you'll end up with piece of paper that has some very fine seeds and then some still some debris on it so just go through that and shake that stuff off. Okay. Okay so this stuff that's left over is mostly the uh, the seeds that you're going to use. So now we're going now we're going to get to the point where we actually sow the seeds. This is what I use it's just little two inch pots and I've got some uh, Pretty uh, standard kind of cactus mix that I get from my local soil supplier. Um, and it's a really nice mixture. It's got lots of sand in it. It's also, I've added pumice to it as well, which is a, a nice material. The ones that are really peaty that you can get in the, uh, a lot of those big box stores and stuff, they're not particularly good. They're made out of decomposed wood, but if you can get a good, nice quality soil-based cactus mix, uh, from your local supplier. That's a, that's a nice way to go. You can also do it with just a regular potting soil as well, but add lots of pumice to it because it makes it better drained. Okay, so these are two inch pots. And what I do then is I get a kettle of freshly boiled water. So it's still r roasting hot. Now I have this out in the garden and I'm just gonna pour this over the pots so that the, the pots get completely saturated with the hot water. And then I'll let them to drain. Now you haven't put any seeds in these yet. These are just empty pots. And uh, what you can do then is you just let them just sit like that until the water is drained out and you leave them a few minutes until it cools down. You can stick your labels in there. I just have Echeveria hybrid written on there. It's, they're not particularly, they're not particularly selected hybrids. I'm just going to note the date down that I sowed them and just pop those in there. And then we'll sow the seeds. Just sow the seeds. Here they are on the piece of paper. And I'm outside now and I have uh, these two drained pots. So I'm just going to sort of fold the paper a little bit and shake a few seeds into the pot. Like this, you see. So we do it. There we are. Like a little crease in the paper. So my little tiny seeds kind of fairly uniformly over the pot. You can put as many as you want in there because you know, you're going to get millions of seeds out of any seed pot. So, seeds fall in the pots. Now, the idea of the boiling water was to try and kill some of the algae and stuff that's in the soil or some of the fungi that are in the soil. It's not really essential, but it, it does make a difference. It, like, it kills a certain amount of the bad stuff that's going to be there. So the next thing we do then is put these two seed pots inside a Ziploc bag. Okay, so there we are inside the Ziploc bag. It's, it's a nice size. It's just a quart size bag, and that'll take two of those two-inch pots, and you seal it up completely. Now you can plant, put these in a couple of different places. Um, my 
preference is to put them underneath fluorescent lights and I'll show you where I do that now in a minute. You could also put it in a windowsill but if it's a windowsill where it gets a sudden blast of hot sun it'll cook those seedlings in 10 minutes. So you have to do it in a cool windowsill or one that doesn't get direct sunlight. Uh, bright but not direct sunlight. So let me show you under the fluorescent lights. Okay so here's the fluorescent light shop that I have here with all these cacti and stuff growing. You can see there's a bunch of cacti seedlings coming up and I grow these in exactly the same way as the echeverias. Um, the lights are great. These are the high output um, T T5 lamps, is it, I think? Um, yeah, they're the they're four foot long and they're suspended on these metal shelves in my garage. Um, and they give off a certain amount of heat and that just keeps the plants at really nice temperature. But uh, I just put the little bag of seedlings or the seeds right underneath the lights because they need light to germinate. Um, Echeveria's germinate best at temperatures below 80 degrees, so you'll, uh, Fahrenheit. So you're going to be better off doing this in the winter months. If you were to do this in, say, April or May, when the temperature spikes up to 80 and above, it's going to be much too hot for these to germinate. So middle of winter is a great time to do it. And even if you save the seeds in the summer, keep them until the winter to sow them. Okay, so there's the, uh, that's how I do it. A few weeks later, you're going to end up with, uh, bunch of tiny little echeverias. There are some that I transplanted earlier, but this is only a very few. What they'll look like when they've germinated is like how these cacti look. Tiny little, a whole mass of them like this inside the bags. And once they germinate inside the bags, you can leave them in the bags for like a month until they get a, to be a decent size. And then you can prick out, just take a little tiny clump of three or four little plants and move them into a pot like these ones here. So here's some echeverias that were moved earlier and uh, they're in there. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Enjoy your growing. Okay, a quick little follow-up video on those echeverias that I sowed from seed a week ago. Here they are in this bag. So I'm gonna open those up, you can see. When you're looking through the side of the bag, there's something green. Open it up. I haven't opened it since then, but when you look down inside, there are the tiny Echeveria seedlings. Seven days later. So what I will do is leave those in the bag for the next month or so until they've really grown quite big. And then I will slowly open the bag, take the pots out and grow them on under the lights for a while more, and then transplant them into their own little pots.